Hi, I'm Carol Van Dyke from Vittisvere. Oh. Welcome to Amsterdam. Oh, Welcome so to Amsterdam. <laughs> we are gathered here together today to show you our favorite spots in the city. All right, so this is the Paradiso Club, famous venue. Yeah, you can still see that it's, that it used to be a church. It's the most magical place to play in Amsterdam, I would say. This is our friend, Martijn Jokers. Hello. Uh, he's going to give us a tour inside Paradiso. I was squatted by a bunch of hippies in 1968. And they needed the place to have their concert, so Pink Floyd played here in 69. But gradually evolved to the pop temple it is nowadays. This is where all the bands have the after party. Last time around here was with Pavement. I believe that nobody was sober <laughs> at 2 o'clock at night, but that was a fun time. When we tell people that we're from Amsterdam, people usually think about the canals, the historic buildings, and stuff like that. But another part of Amsterdam, which was only built like in the past 10 years, is this whole area. It's very modern. Architects were allowed to go crazy. So you see a lot of different kinds of structures. I was born uh, in Vancouver. My parents got divorced when I was about seven. That's when my sister and my mom and I moved to Holland. For a long time I had a sort of like a, a love-hate relationship with Amsterdam, but I think that had a lot to do with the fact that for a couple of years I was moving from one temporary spot to another. There's this, this system here in Amsterdam where you could temporarily live and then almost demolish buildings. And after a couple of months, you have to move out because they're going to demolish it. Most of the apartments here in Amsterdam are rent controlled, by the way, which is really good, especially if you don't have a lot of income, like musicians and artists, you know. So this is the famous uh, Lloyd Hotel. It used to be uh, a prison. And they just renovated it and uh, made it into a hotel where artists and bands stay. And every room is designed by a different designer. Pretty cool, but we're not going to go there <laughs> today. <laughs> but if you need a hotel to stay at... Go to the Lloyd Hotel. Lloyd Hotel. Alright, so across the Lloyd Hotel we have the canteen, which is called the Cantina in Dutch. It's a restaurant owned by friends of us, so uh, we might go in there and see what's happening. We got our beers. It's Remco. It's cool. Hi. We're going downstairs to see the studio where we mix Pharmacy of Love. What I really like about this place is that it's not really like corporate. There's a lot of studios that are really expensive and that you just don't want to dare touching whatever. With Remco recording and mixing it was like everybody was equally important and uh, had as much input as the other. So uh, that's why we love it. The Pharmacy of Love, we recorded it uh, in four days and we mixed it for way longer. At a certain point our, uh, we reached uh, the bottom of our wallet and uh, we wanted to uh, do some more mixing and Remco was uh, working on putting on in a new floor and painting the place and then we said well damn it I'm gonna put in the floor and paint your walls together with you and therefore because I did that we got two extra days of mixing. That kind of guy he was. Were you allowed to say yeah. this, or was it a secret? I don't know. I've said it now, so there's no way back. <laughs> well, after Beer Strip Naked, which is a semi-acoustic record, uh, we definitely wanted to turn it upside down and go wild again. We are still an alternative rock band. We've always been loud. <laughs> The first plan was to call this album uh, Better Sweet Rock. <laughs> and, uh, and then we thought, well, 
A lot of people will compare it to the latest ACD, so Megadeth, so whatever, <laughs> and then they're gonna say, you call that rock? Uh -huh. So therefore we have to come up with something else. I once saw this documentary called Pharmacy of Life, it was called. It was about, um, you know, the whole process, for instance, uh, when you fall in love, what, do, what happens in your brain or your body, the endorphin and stuff uh, starts flowing. And why are you attracted to this person and not that person? And it all came down to uh, uh, somebody's voice or somebody's smell and not so much the, the looks. And that's when I started thinking about stuff. And it's probably the basics of, of this record. And I didn't tell you about it back then, did I? <laughs> We're going to go visit our bass player, Herman Binskuka, who is a very, very good chef. Yes, please. Mm, can we taste? Yeah, sure. Did you bake them? Yeah. The place is called Razzmatazz. A great place to have a good meal. That's it's a tongue scar. A steak that I have. Roasted bell pepper, roasted eggplant, and roasted cheese. We have two creme brulee, two apple crumble. Cheesecake with the bottom of a pastonje cookies. Mm. Tomorrow he's hopefully going to win a Small Devils Award for Best Dutch Bass Player. He's one of the three nominees. <laughs> he's nervous, I think. <laughs> The last place we want to show you is one, probably one of the smallest clubs in Amsterdam. It's also a cafe. They have live music. There are tears on all the dies. Every day is a compromise. Poetry, uh, movies. Knitting. N knitting, even. Hair cutting. On Tuesday evening, you can get your hair cut or a massage, and there's also live music. Uh, it's called the new Anita. And it's owned by friends of us, Jeroen and Olga. And Jeroen <laughs> used to be our drummer for a couple of years. So uh, it's over there, and we're gonna have fun. All right, let's go. Okay, thanks for having us. It's been a nice day. I'm gonna have a beer upstairs, so... Uh, and I'm gonna have a massage. Serious? Alright, thanks.